Thanks a lot, guys. This is the last episode in this little mini series. The J League must be on the eve if you're watching this by now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the series so far. Me and David in this one, we're just kind of cutting on the fixture list, so rare implications, different, you know, more kind of so rare themed uh, kind of chat. I hope you've enjoyed it, guys. Massive thanks again to Gambasak English and, you know, for everything they've helped us with on this. Uh, and of course, David at Seize the Day 23, the man himself. I hope you've enjoyed this. And this is the last episode of this one. Thanks a lot, guys. And I'll see you next month for what will probably be the equivalent to this, but MLS. Take care. And then, as me and you were kind of talking about there, David, once you kind of go past and you actually scroll through and have a look at the fixture list, there's a full roster of matches on virtually every three days. It's absolutely yeah. mental to think about the impact that's going to have on game weeks. Yeah, it's going to be a packed season for sure. I mean, obviously, we know it from European leagues and, and uh, we get used to it, but it's, it's the same with the Asian leagues and the, and the J and the K leagues. Start packing in the fixtures. You've got to get used to the, the Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday roll again. Yeah, I'm, I'm still scrolling all the way to April. Still going. It's basically like every three, four days, every team is in action, you know? Um, yeah, it, April, will be, April will be when the, cha the Asian Champions League kicks in. And then obviously, I think, is it June or July when the Olympics are scheduled for? So yeah. that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, so a lot of those fixtures will end, they'll, they'll probably get a big pile up. You know, they'll probably start getting some uh, some things getting kicked down the road. We'll probably start to see some clubs that are maybe get three games in hand on their on their competitors and that sort of thing as well. That's it, and it's well known in the community that I mean, obviously, it's it's laughed about quite a lot. It's J League rotation, but I mean, it's it's happening in every league now. And, yeah. and I think the reason that J League got the the reputation was is that some goalkeepers were being rotated, and that obviously annoyed quite a lot of people. But um, these squads aren't massive. They don't, you know, Japanese teams don't have huge, huge squads. So um, if you're going to punt on some of the the fringe players, that might be the time to do it around about the April time. Yeah, well, that's good to know. Because I said the, the what do you call it? Oh, I've just found a wee roll of honour, the winners lists. Oh, you can have F Marinos, and you're dead, right? Champions 2019. Kashia Antlers, yep. the last other team to win it other than Kawasaki. So, yeah, th those are clubs that we definitely will be looking at. I think for. a lot of people on the platform think that, you know, Kawasaki Frontale, they ran away with the league and they, they've been this sort of dominant force, but the, the, historically they haven't been. I've never just, heard of them. Got it to, before this, uh, uh, they just—they've had this—they've had this sort of golden generation of, of Tanaka and, and Mitoma and, and Yamada. They've all clicked right at the same time. And if you're talking about a dynasty, it looks like they're at the start of one. As long as they all stay there and they don't get transferred away in the summer, that is—they're they're starting the dynasty right now. I thought Tanaka would have been primed for a move to Europe, but he's not anywhere near it from the looks of it. Yeah. The thing is, Quinny, is, is if it does happen, it's going to happen in, in our summer, isn't it? It's going to happen in May, June time. Okay. Um, at Fair the end enough. of our European season so if someone's going to lose him they're going to probably lose him then yeah okay so okay well that's fair enough I suppose that I always kind of thought maybe you know the European teams maybe try and sneak them in in January as a January signing perhaps but no that makes sense I suppose yeah. anyone who has tracking him possible. seriously yeah, probably wants to make sure he's going to come into their squad at the right time and get a pre-season with them get up to speed integrate well I suppose he's probably that sort of signing, isn't well, we, As a rule, we are now seeing a lot more Japanese and, and Asian players you know, going to Europe, aren't we? But it's, yeah. it's, it's happening. I mean, the lad, uh, the lad in the K-League, Kim Moon Hwan, who's gone to LAFC, yeah. um, I watched him quite considerably last year at Busan Eye Park, and although they got relegated, um, <laughs> these are the types of moves that a lot of teams are looking at now. And, and there's untapped talent in the league, for sure. If you watch a whole season of the J-League and the K-League, um, a lot of these players can do jobs in Europe and, and it would be mad for, for the European clubs to not look at them. For sure. And that's one thing I always think, that I've kind of noticed, I should say, sorry, since been on so rare, is like, there is like three or four Japanese players in the Belgian league. There's a couple in Eredivisie, there's a couple here, there's a couple there. And it's, you know, when you actually, you see the wood for the trees, if that makes sense, they are, you know, they do bleed into Europe quite a lot. It's not just yeah. the, it's not just the Minaminos, it's not just the Kagawas and the Nakamuras or whatever. There is, mm -hmm. you know, kind of other levels of talent dotted around Europe's leagues as well. They and I think a lot of people will now, obviously the new season starting and, and heightened interest, a lot of people will actually go and watch the highlights and they'll watch the games and they'll realise that the quality isn't as, I mean, it's quite snobbish to look at it and say, oh, it's the Asian foot, but it, the, I don't know how old Sun Hyundai have got on today in the Club World Cup, but um, these teams can play and there's, there's perfectly capable players in there that, that can do a job not only in real football but also in, in your so rare gallery as uh, can play them in All-Star Division 4. I've got flash scores up there now, uh, so I'll see if I can tell you. 
Cup World Cup, isn't it? So we're under... They were 2-1 down at half-time, but I don't know what happened. Oh, were they? I think you actually sent me that before we came on, didn't we? They finished 2-1 losers to Tigres. Uh, okay. Yeah, Tigre. It was uh, Gignac, the, uh, the big French striker. Oh, yeah, of course. Destroyed. Yeah. Scored two. One he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's their record goal scorer. He's a good player. Aye. He's just one of those players that just but, finds but, a you know, territory. What, what, all I wanted them to do is I wanted all Sans to actually, you know, to... to Put on a good performance for Asian football and, and to prove that it's it's of decent quality. And they've let you down. <laughs> they've let me down, yeah. <laughs> Letting the side so, down, how you and die. Yeah, oh, there we go. But that's that's really the aim for next season. And, and people, um, whenever the video goes out, people will be looking and scouting and looking for these players. Is suspend the belief that you need to compare them to other teams and look at them in that microcosm of what they're going to do for you on so uh, exactly you know what type of player are they how do they fit into your gallery space and how they you know, how you can correlate them into your other lineups and there's there's um, untapped value there there's so much untapped value it's untrue and anyone starting off on the platform that's exactly where you should be heading no, i agree because with the couple of cards I got, I'm just going to try and pull mine up the now. I'm on so rare data, I don't know how this has happened, but I think I'll be able to find it. Okay, my gallery. I don't really have that many J League uh, or everybody's leagues. So it should be easy. Um, the thing is, you don't need you don't need loads. You don't need you know you need enough to to put a base team out in an a in Asia Division Four, and then you need an, uh, some to maybe feed into under twenty three, and some for for the All Star Division Four and. There's so many useful pieces you're going to be able to use for the 2021 season coming up. If you can jump the gun and do your research before the majority, then, you know, you're laughing. Yeah. I'm just looking at my so rare data. I don't know why, but it's not showing my Kosai Tani, which makes me nervous. <laughs> well, I, did, I, did I do something in my sleep last night when I woke up for that Nunes? No, I think what's happened is, I think a lot of the players are still showing as ineligible that have gone out on loan. So, oh, because he's yeah. on loan from Gambo Osaka, it might be. But. Ah, yeah, that's probably what it is. I'm just going to go on my Surreal Gallery and I mean, pull it up. But I've not got that many. And what I was kind of saying to you more off camera is um, Atlas, by the way, have IPO'd the time of recording. Um, depending on when you're watching this, that may be funny for you to look back at. Um, but what it allowed me to do, um, so let me just see. J League. There we go, League. Da, 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 da. J League. I've got 16 cards now, right? If I get many, I must only have like two or three K League cards. Um, but a lot of these guys I picked up um, when they IPO'd initially, like Ueda, Ominami, Machida, Chanatip didn't do anything, um, and then laterally got guys like Kawobe, Tanaka, and Yamane. It was because you will win Asian cards if you compete in the Globals and other 23s, you will win them. And a lot of these guys that you'll win are decent cards that you can make a turn out of, especially if you have a couple of cards that can complement them. You can maybe go into the Asia region specifically. Or you can keep them for like your globals and your under twenty threes wherever you've won them. But I like the idea of having a few cards already that if I won an Asian card that maybe on the face of it I wouldn't be too excited about. If I actually activated a couple of cards that I fancied anyway into a full like D three situation or D four situation, then brilliant. You know, so I definitely recommend acquiring a few items to surround any potential future rewards with. Absolutely, and also use use the community. I mean, the community on on Twitter, especially. There's there's so many knowledgeable people out there. There's so many people that watch the league in and you know, week in week out, and have have gained that knowledge. And, and most people are there to help. You know, they'll they'll give you an honest appraisal of a player, and and then tell you how they fit into your gallery and, and how you can use them going forward. So, um, use the resources. Don't be scared to be dipping into Asian football. You see it as a challenge. You know, there's. There's, there's a league there that you, that you don't know about and it's there's so much fun learning about it and watching and, and learning new players well the main the, the main ones I bought I've sold the Yamane um, uh, recently yep. but Yamane Tanaka and Asaka the three main ones I don't think i played them in Asia region more than twice R Ryo Takao yep. who I won as well was under 23 eligible when I won him these guys went into my global D3 D4 under 23s all the time yeah. because there were great little differential cards that other people maybe not would have played or even looked Absolutely. at yeah. and um, no, they helped me win some amazing prizes yeah on that differential point you know people people as you said they just won't they tend to not play the asian cards and if you if you're playing a you know a five percent sub five percent owned asian card in an under 23 league that, that you know goes off and scores you 90 to 100 points you're going to be one of the few that plays that card so yeah um that's something that, that's overlooked sometimes. Yeah, definitely. 